But first of all, can we talk about the moon for a second? And how the moon landing was fake. You still believe in the moon? <laughs> oh, <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> no. I think um, gotta get out of here. The whole the whole internet collectively had like a wave of um, this Samsung moon photo story. It kind of just washed over the internet for like a week. I made a video sort of breaking it down, explaining what's happening. Uh, to rewind a little bit, uh, Galaxy S23 Ultra has a 100x space zoom. Mm -hmm. And it's not the first one. I think the S21 Ultra was the first one to have, or S20 Ultra. S20 Ultra was the first one to have space space zoom. Yeah, Yeah. space zoom. Mm -hmm. And so space zoom, you know, interesting name, but the idea is you can zoom in 100x to things really, really far away. And what's further away than space? You want to take pictures of things in space? Um, and in some of their earliest and most interesting advertising, zoom in on the moon, take a picture of the moon. Cool. Um, so that's what people have been doing uh, for years. And I think in the past, we re- realized that Huawei, they were accused of faking their moon photos, mm-hmm. which they, you know people would zoom in really far on the moon on some Huawei phones, and they'd take a photo of a blurry moon, and then somehow their photo would be really detailed. and be like, what's going on here? And that had, a, that had its old wave. That already washed over the internet. Yeah, that was the P30 series, which mm-hmm. was like the first phone with that periscope camera. Yeah. And so that they made a huge deal that you could actually get that close to the moon. Yeah. And there was a huge controversy over whether that they were faking it or not. And then there's this whole section of the internet that's like, like, look at how bad the iPhone's camera is. It's just a blob on the iPhone. Yeah. And then so that comparison always happens. So now Samsung has this thing happen where I think maybe a month ago I made a short uh, zooming in. We had a full moon. I zoomed all the way in. I just posted the clip because it was impressive on Twitter and it had like 20 million views the next day. Like it kind of blew up. Um, and in that I sort of said, well, at least they're not doing the thing that Huawei got accused of doing of like overlaying the moon. Uh, but now... <laughs> they are getting accused of that exact thing. So what's yeah. interesting is we had a Reddit user uh, do an experiment because he was sort of uh, thinking that maybe Samsung was enhancing their moon photos a little bit. So he took a printout of a photo, a photo of the moon. And uh, actually, no, not a printout. I think it's just an on a monitor. It was on his monitor. He made it in yeah. Photoshop, yeah. You know, put it across the room, zoom all the way in to 50x, 100x, and take a picture of the image of the moon on a screen and... It works. It looks like the moon. Then he takes a blurry image of the moon, takes a picture of that, and the end result is like dramatically sharpened, much more detail than the original image could ever have, which leads us to all believe whatever's going on here, it's fake detail. Samsung is doing something. Mm -hmm. Turns out they've been doing this for generations since like S10 or something like that. Uh, There's a whole page of documentation on Samsung's site that talks about this. Um, But I always thought it was funny because... We, we always talk about like computational photography and I did the video on the iPhone's camera and I did another video called smartphone cameras versus reality and smartphone cameras, they just edit reality. They uh-huh. just edit all the time. And this one particular thing people really seem to get attached to, which is moon photos, which is as far as I can tell, not a very common picture to take, but it's such an <clears throat> obvious use case where people can notice that it's quote faking the image of the moon. It's with AI, et cetera. It's, it's an interesting story. I just felt like that was a fun wave of internet. I think it's like not common in the sense that we don't see everyone taking it, but it still winds up being, if you think about all the pictures taken of a singular thing in the entire world, it might be the most common oh, because if you're thinking of people, you still have to think of them as individual people. So it does have this opportunity to be the one thing that yeah. everyone in the world can see and take a picture of. Is the moon the, and most, therefore, the most photographed thing of all time? singular thing i don't know i mean it's funny because it's tidally locked right so it's gonna look the exact same from all angles of the earth on every single night prove it (laughs) (laughs) i I could if you want me to um and so everyone's images are gonna look vaguely the same it's like it's like those um things happen on instagram sometimes where people take almost the exact same photo and then they accuse each other of like stealing each other's images Mm. and they're slightly different but they're almost exactly the same like the moon is the one thing that's going to look the same to everyone Mm -hmm. so if you were going to run a quote-unquote scene optimizer on the moon it would be the easiest thing to do it on yeah and samsung actually ended up releasing a statement this morning after we put our video out yesterday Mm -hmm. or two days ago or whenever we put that out yeah After multi-frame processing has taken place, Galaxy Camera further harnesses Scene Optimizer's deep learning-based AI detail enhancement, that's a lot of words, engine, to effectively eliminate remaining noise and enhance the image details even further, which is a lot of words that mean very little. (laughs) Yeah. 
<laughs> engine. Engine. They have this diagram of like the pipeline of how it apparently works, yeah. and it just shows like learning data, low resolution moon photo, and then it's just like black box a neural engine. <laughs> no, it's just like some squiggly <laughs> lines. Yeah, <laughs> beep boop, and AI it comes happens. Up, and it's like they never. I don't know. They sometimes deny things, but they sort of use big words to say very little. I think the only the only thing that I can definitely tell, which is somewhat interesting, is I think most people. Uh, functionally understand it as going camera sees moon camera recognizes moon camera takes picture of moon puts it on top of my picture like just an overlay yeah and that's not actually what's happening that would be uh i don't want to say more fake that would just be like more brute force there was an old uh, i think i saw like a vivo phone that wasn't zooming in on the moon but if it was a picture in the dark sky and there was the moon it was like straight up putting a fake moon oh my God. in there and like way closer i'll try and find yeah. that photo again but it wasn't like the zoom into the moon just randomly yeah. would enhance it so this one's a little more interesting we, we kind of talked about dolly when it came out how you know generative ai can create a photo from static and find details in however much you want it to find details this one is like if i take a picture of the moon and it's like kind of red tonight it will still enhance it and find all the details of what it knows a moon should look like because scene optimizer is on, but it also will still be kind of red mm -hmm. because it is still using my source image and running it through the AI. Oh, that's, they thought they could get was, away with that? They called it super moon mode, so I think oh you were my. kind of expecting it to be oh, it's a that mode. fake. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I guess this one's very oh my <laughs> God. So for the, for the audio listeners, basically the image on the left, which doesn't have the optimizer on or whatever, is just like, kind of like a glowing white like small normal. small glowing white dot and then the resulting image after the photo was taken is a giant moon yeah, yeah. It's, it's also a one times photo down like an alleyway so you're seeing building and then in the sky it's a yeah. small portion of it but it's still like quadrupling the size of the moon yeah that one's a little more that's, hand that's, yeah. that's yeah it's not doing that yeah but i guess the point is um there there are tests where like you can you can put a bunch of like pixels or let's say an airplane flies in front of the moon or a satellite or something happens where your moon actually happens to look a little bit different your photo through AI will still have that distinguishing detail. So it's not just an overlay, it is actually running it through this engine, <laughs> this yes. black box of AI, whatever Samsung is doing. Um, and so that's what's happening. I just think it's funny that we, we talk about this so much, but there there's no articles about how like, I don't know, you take- okay. Your face? Yeah, the moon is, let's say it's one of the most commonly photographed items. Take another thing like Stonehenge, like a commonly photographed item. Everyone who takes a photo of it with Samsung's scene optimizer turned on, all of their grass will be greener in all of their pictures. All of their skies will be bluer. And that's not a particularly surprising fact. It's just like the way these phones and their AI process images, they're editing these things all the time. We're just uh, a little more reactive when it's the moon for some reason. Well, it's a particular object versus like a general kind yeah, of grass and sky. like scene optimizer versus object optimizer is like a little bit different, I guess. But what happens when <laughs> like take somewhere like New York City, right? Where we're now we now have like six decades of pretty constant photography in a pretty limited area. Mm -hmm. Like at what point can these like a company like Apple or Google that has access to these giant amounts of photo sets with location data just start to know what everything looks oh, like yeah. from every angle. Oh, yeah. um, and then that doesn't that sort of blur the line between scene optimizer and object optimizer. Like if it, it was like, oh, I've seen like 10,000 pictures from this exact intersection. I know that at 2 p.m. the light hits this building and makes it look crazy. So I'm just going to like do that. Do that. Yeah. 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 I think um, when I think about that, it's it's the what is a photo question. There's uh, photos of objects and photos of like people and scenes yeah and i think if like you have a billion images of say the empire state building from 42nd street and someone takes a photo from that spot just like everybody else did your phone recognizes it and <laughs> sharpens up the windows and does the thing that it knows it's supposed to look like i wouldn't be mad because that's actually reality uh -huh. is what you're getting closer to but where I would get kind of weirded out is if it's like a group of my friends around the campfire and then the phone's like, oh, I know what your friend's face around the campfire is supposed to look like and changes it. Yeah. Like, I want to remember the moment, not the object. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I was going to say, like, at one at one point, your phone basically becomes a search engine like that. That 
uh, example oh. with 42nd Street. Yeah, we talked about <clears> If that. you took a photo of 42nd Street, but it's like, oh, it's a cloudy day, but this actually looks the best when the sun is hitting it because it's 7 p.m. And so we're just going to overlay what it looked like at 7 p.m. in someone else's photo. Oh. Your phone becomes a search engine at that point. It's searching Google Images and then just basically just kind of overlaying Luminar AI, like yeah, so giving when, you a sky replace. Yeah, images. like when you take a photo, it's less about taking the photo and it's more about searching a database and showing people that you are at this location that exists. I think it should always aim to improve the photo towards reality, not towards like better looking. If that makes sense. Like if I take a photo and it's cloudy, I don't want it to add golden hour. Like I want it to be more accurate because it knows what cloudy is supposed to look like and yeah. I'm actually in a cloudy scene. So I don't want it to enhance it and make it look better or different. Cause we talked about this with the iPhone thing where it's like, it lights your face yeah. evenly, even though there's right. no light on your face. Remember how like, terrible that picture of me was? Yeah, at yeah. night and we're like, that's that doesn't look right. Cause right. that's not what real life looks like. I would always want it to enhance towards natural, towards reality. And I think it gets kind of weird. Like the moon one is technically, technically enhancing it to be more accurate, right? I guess it's like, it's making your photo yeah. better. Everyone's yeah. photo of the moon more or less should look the same because we all see the same moon. I just don't want them to get to like enhancing it and making it look different. Yeah, counterpoint, the majority of people buying these phones do want that. I was just gonna say, <laughs> from a marketing uh, perspective, they absolutely the moon, want your photo to my, look better. I want my face to look better in photos. If it's a cloudy day and it could be golden hour in front of the Empire State Building, they're gonna make a golden hour in front of the Empire this State is, Building. This is really interesting. You, you've seen this TikTok face filter thing that's going around? Have you guys I seen mean, this? I don't Snapchat. have TikTok because I'm a boomer. Oh, wait, wait, which Okay, so one? there's a new face, there's a new glamour filter in TikTok that is actually used, it's not an overlay anymore. It's, it's a little different. It's actually generative AI. AI. Oh no! And so it looks Press, at your yeah. face, and so you know how on Snapchat, if you like cover half your face, it like glitches out and disappears. Mm -hmm. On this one, you can obscure parts of your face, and it still perfectly applies the rest of the filter. It's called the glamour filter, and people are universally weirded out by this. Mm -hmm. Like everyone's using it and trying it and getting weirded out, and that's the theme is because it looks like a super enhanced version of you. So I don't, I don't think people actually want things to look like super enhanced. It's a little weird. They in, just want it to look accurate. In one month, no one will be weirded out. And I was going to say, everyone will be using. It. I think in, people do want to look super mm -hmm. enhanced. In two months, everyone will just be wearing AR glasses, and we'll just see it applied to everyone in the <laughs> Which, world. like, the makeup <laughs> industry will collapse, and it'll just be AI, AI filters. Yeah, AR music. Are you trying to glamour it right now? The glamour filter. I'm pretty hot. <laughs> I mean, we already knew that. Eyes are Do I have the glamour this. filter on Maya? Wait, I want to screen yeah. record this. Dude, I just have the glamour filter in so real life. Shiny. So it really does. Like, it makes my eyebrows look super clean, and like I just and like got cover them done. one of your eyes with your hand, and it just goes. Oh yeah, it's fine. Alice like looks like a model. That's so interesting. It has Very, yeah. weird. Very weird. Get ready for our mental health crisis to get even worse. It's like, That's of course, saying. it's TikTok that pulls us off. It's TikTok, so it's like. Snapchat does talk that too. In Snapchat does the Snapchat does the overlay stuff, and they'll probably start doing AI generative filters too. Do people want that? I don't know. Yes, mm -hmm. they do. I feel like two years. <laughs> yes, they do, and then it will be horrible for Maybe society they, in okay. about a year. Do they want a subtly enhanced version, or do they just want the golden hour? They want crazy. They want the crazy. One hundred ten percent. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's not the reaction. It's Online getting dating right is gonna suck soon. I think the <sighs> reason it's getting that reaction is because people are like. Being re like people will be reactive about this kind of technology, but at the end of the day, people are going to use it mm -hmm. every single day. Even if you just take mm -hmm. one step back, like to the photos we're taking, though, like every single photo we take of our face is getting like the remember the yeah. Pixel Six, how over sharpened it was. Like that's not much different than this moonshot. Like yeah, clarity one hundred. Just yeah. like mm -hmm. that's what the moonshot really feels like it's doing, and that's what Which it's I'm doing to our faces, or it's smoothing it so then all of the wrinkles are going away. Like. I prefer it's very similar. Yeah, I guess th those are in opposite directions though. The sharpening is yes. is theoretically more real more realistic and the smoothening is less realistic. Smooth smoothening? Smooth smoothing. smoothing. smoothing yeah. The smooth yeah. smoothing. The smooth <laughs> the smoothie is less realistic. I mean sharpening is not necessarily it more can, realistic. You can get to the point of less realistic. It just depends realistic. on like what level of sharpness and contrast our eyes see. Right. It's all based on like I think our eyes see much more than a camera typically sees. So whenever you can enhance what a camera sees to get more of the detail that your eyes see. Like when you look up at the moon in real life, you you see the craters and you see the moon. So when you point the camera at the moon because you yeah, want to capture softer. the moon, you wish it wasn't a 
blob. You wish you yeah. were getting what your eyes were seeing. Yeah. So I think I like, I, I personally want to get more of what my eyes are seeing. For sure. Ideally. Yeah. As a tool, I think it's kind of cool because zoom in general on phones is pretty terrible. So like these super zoom into the moon doing that is cool. I hope it can get to the point where if I'm actually zooming in and trying to be like, I saw a grizzly bear at this park and like, yeah. I don't want to get anywhere close to it, but it, now it's just this like brown blur on my yeah. phone. Like yeah. if zoom they can enhance it. that, it'll be pretty cool. Don't zoom. overlay a bear on it. But it's going to overlay a bear gonna... <laughs> eating salmon because that's what bears <laughs> yeah. do. Yeah. In the middle of the woods with no water nearby. Yeah, that's... yeah. yeah. So now we're just making generative art instead of taking pictures. <laughs> it's just Dolly. Sick. Thanks for watching this podcast. Please subscribe and like and comment on this banana okay see you that was two words words. see ya (laughs) (laughs) see ya cya wouldn't want to be ya cya because i want to be myself every day of the week before chat gpt is you peace bye